from Countach to collectible. Here's a look at the brand new 3.0 Transformers MDLX Sideswipe. Three Zero is proud to announce the release of MDLX Sideswipe, a redesigned version of the brash young Autobot Warrior. The Transformers MDLX line of figures are based on the 1980s Transformers cartoon and toy line, as redesigned by Three Zero art director Calvin So. The iconic designs have been remixed to incorporate Three Zero's hyper detailed mechanical aesthetic, offering a familiar and exciting new presentation. Well, we can only hope if we're getting a sideswipe, it won't be long before he gets his Lamborghini brother Sunstreaker. Just before we get a closer look, though, at the new MDLX sideswipe, first I'd like to thank the folks over at 30 that did provide the sample we could have a look at. While I'm doing my thing of measuring off the figure, I did also want to tell you guys that this guy is slated to release the third quarter of 2024 for around $80 online. Sideswipe, though, is going to stand at about five and three quarters of an inch in height, or the figure's 14 centimeters tall. I have a couple of other MDLX Autobots I could bring in for comparison. First, the original. Here's what the figure looks like with Optimus Prime. You know, the way that they keep continuing to improve the look of these MDLX figures sadly, unfortunately, make Optimus Prime look even more outdated. I think it's prime time. Ah, I see what I did there. Prime time that we get ourselves a brand new MDLX Optimus Prime. And then speaking of other Autobots, here's what the figure also looks like with Bumblebee. Uh, Sideswipe obviously is a lot taller than Bumblebee, but he's not, though, as quite as tall as Optimus. Following the format of these MDLX reviews, before we get down to the details and we look at the various accessories that come include with Sideswipe, first thing that we'll look at is the instruction sheet. Uh, you mean booklet? No, actually, it is a sheet. It's only printed on, well, it's technically printed on both sides, but I would still consider this a sheet. One side, though, shows you how to swap out his various arm attachments. does also get you a breakdown of all the things that come in clue with Sideswipe. And then on the back side, it just shows you as well, you can install the shoulder cannon. One thing you won't be installing, like the larger DLX variety, there's no batteries. You don't have to worry about buying batteries for these because they don't have any lights. Uh, like I said, though, the figure does come in clue with quite a lot of things. First, he comes with some swappable hands. Uh, he already has closed fists on the ends of his hands that aren't going to be doing much of anything, but he does, though, have gripping hands for ideally holding the blaster. The figure also comes in clue with a pair of relaxed hands. Any one of these hands can easily be swapped out. Well... I shouldn't say easily swapped out. You can remove the hands, but popping the new hands in place always seems to be a problem. Uh, more so that just the fact that because it's a ball joint that we're dealing with, when you go to remove a hand, for example, I'm just going to take this one off, for, for example. We're going to pop that one off. When you go to put then in a new hand, uh, the hand always seems to shift this joystick uh, ball joint back and forth. Uh, you can kind of just twist it. And I find sometimes that helps to pop it in place before the joint starts to move. But you can see, like, it moves very frequently. There we go, popping the one hand in. And of course, now that we've done that, he can hold himself his blaster. The figure does come include with his blaster, and it does look good. I like this metallic gunmetal silver that they've given it. Uh, it is uh, very nicely detailed, as you can see there as well. There is a nozzle, a hole, I should say, on the end of the nozzle that almost lends the idea that it could have come included with a blast effect, but we don't have any firing effects that tend to come include with these MDLX figures. You can take the blaster, and you can fit it into side swipes hands. Fairly easy, in fact. You just wiggle it back in place. There we go. And because the figure does have so much posability, there's a lot you can do with this figure when it comes to displaying him. Oh, but no, there's there's more. The figure also comes included with a couple of these arm attachments. Now, I believe in the cartoon, he does use these at one point. They're cast in matching silvers here. Uh, one looks to be... They, they really say on the instructions, though, that it's it's like a pistol one and a pistol two. Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily consider them pistols. They do serve a purpose, and they're probably purposes that are displayed in the actual episodes of the cartoon. Uh, again, if you want to change those out, seeing as we already have him holding a blaster on one side, let's deal with the other hand. We'll just pop that off. And then, you know, again, if you want to use this one, or again, if you want to use this one, they plug in place the exact same way. Just wiggle it in place. Yes, you're still going to have to worry about that ball joint moving around on you. But just kind of wiggle it back and forth till eventually it gets in place. I find, honestly, like these ones are a little harder to do. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because you're a little more blind to see where you're actually putting it. But you just kind of wiggle it back in place till eventually it plugs in place. But like I said, this joystick... I keep calling it a joystick, but it kind of really does look like that. It always moves around way too much. It isn't necessarily the fault of side swipes either. All the MDLX figures, because the joints are so small like this, they're always a pain to get them in place. I think I... No. 
we'll just leave him off for right now. Let's give him, in fact, actually a gestured hand. We'll just put that in place. I, again, I, I don't know. I feel like the hands are the easiest things to put in place of at least the things he has. And we'll just wiggle it on there. Um, really, between the two, this was the harder, this was the harder uh, bowl joint to attach the hands onto. Again, just wiggle it. There we go. Finally on there. So it comes with the hands. Uh, the one other thing he has, which is also a nod to the original cartoon, is the shoulder cannon. Now, unlike, I want to show you guys the differences between the two. This is a little bit more like a brushed silver. You can see like this one is a little bit more of a shinier silver. Still, there's the nozzle on the end or a hole on the end that you would think that it could have something that could have attached onto the end of it. There's a little bit of a darker airbrushing you can see on the top there. And when you attach this, you can actually attach this two ways. Uh, you could hold, have this held in his hands. Um, he does kind of have almost the right gripping to hold this. Although the obviously the real reason why you're going to be getting this is it's going to attach onto the tops of his shoulders. You want to kind of move his shoulders out of the way. And Sideswipe actually has two places where the cannon could attach onto. Most cannon accurately, I probably would have it. Oh, I see what I did there. You probably have it, I would guess, on this side here. But you could have it on the opposite too. See these little parts that stick up? What you'll do is just kind of wiggle one of them off and you just attach it. Easily, this would be the first thing you would lose of all of his accessories. So if you ever take this off, you want to probably make sure you put it into a little tiny bag because there's no place in the tray to store this if you ever take that off. Once that's removed, you can look at the bottom of this. There's a little clip. See that? And then that's going to fit. There's actually a little part of the plastic that sticks out and you, you just clip it in place. Now, I would have liked if this could have had some posability. Unfortunately, there isn't. Once you plug it in place, th there's nothing that you can actually move to it. Also, too, you really have to plan things out as to how you want to have the figure displayed. As I did start the review with him kind of pointing his gun forward, you really wouldn't be able to have him seeing what he's doing because the cannon would just be blocking his view. Also to note as well with his shoulders, with the cannon the way they designed it right now, you could bring the shoulder part I guess you would consider the shoulder pad. This does swing down. So let me just show you here. This swings swings forward and back. So you could drop it down just a little bit if you still want him to have the height in order, you know, again, if he's pointing his blaster that way. Still, though, he wouldn't be able to see much of anything because the cannon is just blocking his view of things. Getting, though, a closer look at Sideswipe. Sideswipe was always one of my favorite Autobots growing up. Prowl and Sideswipe were my top two. I think I, at one point, did in fact have a Sideswipe growing up, although I did buy it from a garage sale, so it was in some pretty bad, poor states. But the, from what we get here for 3.0, it definitely does trump the stuff we got from the original Generation 1 line. I will say, though, one thing I was kind of hoping to see with this figure, and he, he unfortunately doesn't have it, is it, when we had a look at Optimus Prime, one of the included accessories that came with Prime was Sideswipe's Jack Pack. So I thought it would be ideal if they had had an Easter egg here where like the back section, like because again, like these don't transform, this would be the top part of the car. I, I was thinking, I was hoping, could this have been something that could have removed? And then underneath that, there would have been like a hole and a hole, so a hole and a hole, so that you could have taken the jetpack and plugged it in place. From what I can see, at least, it doesn't look like you can actually remove this. And I don't know, you wouldn't want to fight with it either because clearly it wasn't designed to be removed. But I just think that that would have been fun. The thing, unfortunately, though, I mean, like, if you're comparing the two, there's definitely a difference of finish. It's a much more shinier kind of cherry red, where, where this was the original jet pack for the came clue with Prime. It's a little bit more, it's got a little more wear and tear. Just though, I kind of wish that that could have atta attached some way onto Sideswipe's body. Uh, from the from the standpoint of the aesthetics of the figure, he's got a great design going for him. He definitely has one of the best MDLX head sculpts we've gotten so far. I should have really brought in uh, Hot Rod. Hot Rod was one of the other ones. Or was it Rodimus Prime? I think it was Hot Rod that we did get from the MDLX release from before. I didn't bring him in just simply because he wasn't part of the original Generation 1 cart. Well, he was kind of post-movie, but at the time of certainly Sideswipe and Optimus Prime and all those characters, I didn't want to really bring in Hot Rod for those reasons. But like, I think like Hot Rod and Sideswipe are my top two favorites right now for the MDLX. There's definitely a more finesse polishing that they've added to these newer figures. Even like to some extent, really, like Bumblebee. I'm going to bring Bumblebee right now. Uh, like what they had done for a while, they were doing like some panel lining here for Bumblebee. You don't see a whole lot of that, really. You don't see it at all for a new Sideswipe. And of course, when you're then comparing it to Optimus Prime, we we'll just bring back in Optimus Prime here. There's definitely an elevation when it comes to the way they finish these figures. Not only does the paint look good, but again, like the way they've done 
kind of the coloring of the gray here. They've kind of gone away from the idea of like making this look metallic, and they kind of want to do a, like a hybrid between the designs of the characters in the cartoons, and then again something that looks like you know like a, a like a metal figure. But I do like the way that they've actually given this guy more like a matte gray finish here on his arms, his obviously his mid abdomen area, and then his lower legs there as well. The red looks fantastic. Very nicely polished. As you can see, he's got the Autobot symbol there front and center on the front of his grill. Now, of course, this, if this was to transform, I mean, like looking at this, it almost feels like you want to start to flip things around, but obviously it, it's not designed to do that. But it does look good, though. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Some of the little also things that I like on the back here is that the tops, so again, like these would be the backs of the car here, and this would be like the spoiler. There's actually a little bit of a spring suspension on the back of the spoilers there, and I also really like that they added these tail pipes i mean not the most practical things i would also be worried that i would be clipping these if i start to move the figure around but i just kind of think it's neat that they added these he also does have spinning tires though they don't spin the easiest it's nice to see that they do actually rotate so here's here's where all the figure kind of breaks down when it comes to the articulation like he's got a fair bit of it the only thing that kind of hinders some mobility for the figure is actually the skirting that he has on the front Hot Rod also had this a similar issue that when you start to move the legs around, these do move out of the way to be fair, but I found myself a couple of times kind of clipping these by accident. Uh, more so the ones on the back here, and these popped off. Luckily, they weren't broken. They were just attached by ball joints. So, you know, if they happen to pop off, you just pop them back in place. But you just want to make sure that when you're moving the legs around that you get these first completely out of the way. Now, for the figure's articulation, like I said, his head's going to be on a ball joint. So right away... Normally, the head would be able to rotate all the way around. It doesn't quite fully do the job just because, like, these things are kind of in the way of things. He does also have a ball joint at the top, so it allows the head to move up and down. But in addition to that, Sideswipe does have a ball joint at the base of his neck. One last time to show you guys what the head sculpt looks like. Definitely one of the best. Definitely one of the best. Now, his upper torso is going to be also on not only a ball joint that swivels back and forth this way, but he also has a crunch. So the crunch allows the figure's torso to move forward about that far. You can also arch it back, but sometimes, again, like when you're doing this, like this just was a good example of this, uh, you can see how this skirting pops off. So if you're looking at it, see there's a hole right there, and there's the ball joint right there. So you're basically just going to want to plug this in place. But, you know, again, like there's no real way around this. If, if it wasn't really for the fact that there was a ball joint there, uh, the, the skirt would only just break. Because, again, like you want to make sure that these be able to move out of the ways to move the legs. Uh, the arms, okay, so the arms rotate all the way around. And there's technically a hinge there as well, so you can bring the hinge of the arms a little bit closer. So you can either have the look of having the arms a little bit wider out. And this also helps, too, to aid with bringing the arms out this way, too, when you drop the arm outward like this. Again, you can also bring it inward, too. The shoulders also hinge back and forth there as well. If you're looking at them, they're actually pegged in place. So there's a swivel that allows these to move outward this way. And, of course, that does also help, too, if he wants to bring his arms outward. There's a swivel there at his bicep. The figure does also have a double hinge on the elbows, and the hands rotate back and forth. Uh, these do also rotate, too. I mean, they don't serve really a purpose other than just being, I guess, if you wanted to kind of move them out of the way. Uh, the upper torso, like I said, does rock back and forth. I think I spent more time talking about the crunch forward and back, but yeah, it does rock back and forth a little bit there as well. But again, like, here's the issue with really both this one. Uh, Prime also had this as well. I, I guess really all the Autobots, all the Transformers for that matter, in the MDLX, kind of had the same issues with the skirting. So you really kind of want to make sure that these are, are outward, for example. And you want to make sure that these are back there as well. Of the two, it's always like the back ones that pop off the most frequently. Probably because it has, a, you have a harder time, honestly, to get access to these. You just kind of hinge them out a little bit just to clear the space. And again, like the legs can do almost a full splits. They would really if the skirt, if this skirt was completely out of the way. But this skirt is, so you can see that he does a full splits that way. The legs go forward and the legs go back. I just want to make sure I'm not hitting that skirt. You can see how that pushes it. And you can probably also see how that would easily push that out. He has a swivel there at the top of the thigh, double hinge on the knee. And the neat thing about with the hinge is that when you hinge it, you can see like he's got a kneecap that goes for the ride. The only thing that the figure also is a little bit limited to is that he does have leg articulation, or I should say he has foot articulation. So this does rock back and forth. He does also have toe articulation, but just by the limitations and how confined these feet are, there's really no way that they've been able to incorporate a proper ankle pivot. I mean, there is one, but with so much stuff around it, even when you ankle pivot, you can't do it by much just because, again, his leg's kind of occupying over top of that. All in all, though, a great looking figure. 
right up there, I would say, with Hot Rod. I might even say, like, this is so far my favorite of what we've gotten with the MDLX figures. Probably should have brought in Hot Rod. I probably should. But yeah, there he is. And again, he's got this shoulder cannon on the top there. Let's bring in the Bumblebee. And let's bring in the Optimus Prime. So far, I think we've gotten ourselves four MDLX figures. And again, there's there's been paint varieties of those as well. We did get ourselves a red version of uh, Bumblebee, obviously, as Cliff Jumper. I believe we did get ourselves a black or uh, Nemesis Prime version of Optimus Prime. I don't think they probably could do all that. I guess they could tool some different elements, different aspects of the body parts for Sideswipe, give ourselves a Sunstreaker. Although Sunstreaker, notably, I think is a taller character. Some few different designs, obviously. You got Diablo and uh, Countach. But uh, yeah, really, really liking the look of this one. The only thing I would say, like, and, and it only comes from the design of the characters and not necessarily the execution of how they're built, is again, like, just the skirting. You got to be really careful with those because when you're moving the legs inadvertently and, and you know prime had that also as well but prime also had a little bit more space there on the tops of his thighs i think you were much easier able to uh, to move the legs really do think that prime needs to get an upgrade though uh, these always kind of really bothered me with optimus prime they obviously put those there just so he can move his feet around you know i i just feel like he really does need an update but for how good three zero have been landing it with these md lex figures bumblebee was good and i don't think bumblebee necessarily needs an update but i think prime it's again i Pardon me for saying this. It is a prime time for them to do a reissue, a new, a brand new mold of Optimus Prime. Because where they set the bar and set the standards right now with your hot rods, with your sunstreak or side swipes, I, I think, again, like as a result of it, unfortunately, the leader of the Autobots kind of comes across now a little bit more outdated. Like the look of the MDLX Sideswipe? Yeah, me too. Like I said, this guy is slated to release the third quarter of 2024 with the asking price online of $79.99. I think on average, that tends to be what MDLX figures go for, including the most recently looked at here on this channel. I think it was either Starscream, maybe even before that, Rodimus Prime. I did say earlier it was Hot Rod. It was actually Rodimus Prime. The figures, though, pack a lot of details. They pack a lot of posability as well. One little bit of posability that I forgot to mention in this review I found out earlier is that the shoulder cannon that plugs onto the top of his torso, yeah, that actually does have a hinge there as well. So you can, act you can actually angle it a little higher up, which I tried to kind of convey here in final looks, but the figure does have some super posability, which again comes with the territory of MDLX figures. Whether you go with DLX the larger scale robots, of course, those do have the possession of light up eyes, or if your quarters are a little bit more cramped and you don't have a much, as much storage space on your shelf, then of course the MDLX figures are right up your alley. They have just as much detail as their larger DLX counterparts, but again, like just the attention to detail to what they've been able to do, they're a really nice hybrid of the Transformers, the original cartoon, and what now 3 are doing. They sort of have taken the ideas and they've mushed it together and given us these great MDLX releases. Sideswipe, I'm not sure if will ever be retooled and, and repurposed to be a Sunstreaker, but considering what they've done with other molds before, I mean, that Starscream's been retooled a couple of times and given us like Thundercrackers and uh, uh, Skywarps. I'm sure probably we're going to be getting something very similar here for Sideswipe. Or hey, why not? They could also, also recolor this guy and maybe give us Red Alert couple of ideas there as well but like i said though a big thank you to the folks over at 30 that did provide the sample of the brand new side so i'm a little disappointed that he didn't actually have the means to attach his backpack from the prime but all things considered, I couldn't be any more happier with Sideswipe, one of my all-time favorite Autobots. Big thank you once again to the folks over at 3-0 that did provide this brand new sample of the MDLX Sideswipe. Is this a figure that you guys could see yourselves collecting? Have you been collecting the MDLX figures? If you have, let me know which ones you have down below in the comments section. In the meantime, if you guys did enjoy this video, throw it a like. You want to stick around for more, hit the subscribe, turn on the bell. And of course, as always, come back, please. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.